All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beginning of our discussion on Rome. So this is going to be another long one like we did when we covered Greece. So this is going to be a while, but it is going to be some good, fun, interesting information. So getting into it, talking about Rome, you know, these are the SOL standards that we're going to be covering. So be sure that you take a quick look at that, as well as the vocabulary that we are going to be learning over the course of this. All right. So go ahead and pause, take a look at it, write it down if you want to. You know, so we have a basic little timeline here. We're going to be talking about the founding of Rome, at least some of the legends behind it. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Roman Republic, their different law systems and all like the 12 tables. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the wars like the Punic Wars, which are very influential to the founding of Rome as a world power in the ancient world. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, Julius Caesar, one of the most influential politicians and generals in Roman history and Western history in general. And getting into, you know, the Roman Empire, its rise and fall. So also the influence that uh, Christianity is going to play into the later years of the Roman Empire. We'll be talking about Pax Romana, which is a big political and social time. Uh, the role of Constantine and the founding, well, renaming of Constantinople, you know, from Byzantium. All right. Going to be talking about the fall when we see a German warrior by the name of Odeker becoming, you know, the king of Rome, which is like the end of the Roman Empire. And we see the beginning of essentially the dark ages of Europe. So, all right, getting into the geography of Rome and this part of the Mediterranean world that we haven't really looked at yet. So, the Greeks, they were interested in colonizing it, Italy back in their, their heyday, okay? Because of a couple of reasons. The Italian peninsula is right smack in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. It is a key location if you are traveling east to west or west to east. There's rich soil there for farming, so it's a great place to raise crops and feed the people of Greece. So the Greeks, they're definitely wanting to set up colonies there. Uh, also, it's a pretty decent climate throughout the vast majority of the year. So, you know, you can grow crops basically year round. All right. And, you know, their geography there makes it a place that it's, for the most part, pretty safe from invaders. Now, just to help you put something in perspective with the size of the Mediterranean Sea, because we haven't really discussed that yet, um, if you were to put the Mediterranean Sea over top of the United States, it's basically going to stretch from one coast to the other. That is how big it actually is. We're talking thousands of miles. All right. So the early peoples of the Italian peninsula, uh, we're going to see between four, 3,000 and 4,000 years ago, we're going to see a bunch of people starting to migrate into the area. So this is like the new Stone Age type people. Um, and then over the next, oh, anywhere from, you know, a couple hundred years to a thousand years, one of these groups, the Etruscans, which you see on the map is the ones in red in Northern Italy. They are going to be one of the first like true kingdoms and we're going to see them ruling over a bunch of the other groups, but after a bunch of revolts, the Etruscans are going to have like these lower classes of other Italian peoples that are going to break free from the Etruscans. And that's going to be like the Romans, the Umbrians, the Samnites, the Celts, like these other groups are going to start breaking away from them. And the number one of these revolutionary groups are the Latins. And they are the people who set up the Roman territory. They found the city of Rome. All right. Now, there are legends about the founding of Rome. We've spoken about one of them back when we were talking about the Trojan War, about some uh, Trojan survivors under the leadership of a prince named Aeneas going on their own crazy journey and ending up in Italy and founding Rome. Another very popular city uh, legend for its founding is this. 
uh, the, the legend of Romulus and Remus. These are twin brothers who were basically lost to the wilderness and they were taken in and raised by a wolf, by a she-wolf. And they are raised into manhood and you know they gain followings of people and they are going to want to found a city and they can't agree on the name. So they set up, you know, basically positions on two opposing hills and they go to war against each other. And, you know, Remus, he wants to name it, you know, Reem or something along those lines. And Romulus wants to name it after himself. So Rome. Um, so after a bunch of fighting goes on, Romulus, you know, he kills Remus and Rome is give the name of the city that they wanted to build. So there, that's one of the popular origin stories of the city of Rome. Now, the geography, as we talked about a little bit already, centrally located in the Mediterranean Sea on the Italian peninsula. You know, it's pretty distant from these Eastern powers. So you're not gonna see any Persian interference or Greek interference for the most part. You know, or Egyptian interference. All right, so they kind of are their own thing over here. Now they have a lot of seaborne commerce, you know, all this coastline, they are going to be able to do a lot of trade going eastward and westward. And, you know, this all this coastline is also pretty good for protection because, you know, if there's something coming, they're going to find out about it pretty quick. And in the north on this border up here that I'm moving over with my mouse, that is the Alps. This is a mountain system in Central Europe that provides actually very, very good protection from any type of land invasions from the north. And that is gonna be a huge part of their security. All right. And here's just some questions for you to just think about when talking about the, you know, the geography of Italy. You know, why would the Alps and the Sea protect the Italian peninsula? And also like what factors would lead Rome to becoming the dominant civilization around the Mediterranean? So the Alps and the Sea protecting the peninsula? Yeah, it's hard to invade from the sea. It's very hard to invade through mountains. That's pretty easy, right? Now, the other question, what factors would lead to them becoming dominant? Um, with them being in the middle, they can kind of go wherever they want. All right, when we're talking geography wise. So, and another thing is the Romans are very good at adapting to their surroundings. So that's gonna be pretty beneficial to them as well. And we will see more of that as we go further into our discussions on Rome. So be sure to pay attention to those following lectures, guys.